After 10,000 years of genetic manipulation via selective breeding, humans finally gained direct access to the genetic code. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. Since then, we've cut and pasted it, photocopied fragments of it en masse, sped read it with sequences, printed out the code letter by letter in the lab, modelled it on computers, and measured it with microscopes. For 40 years now, we've called this work genetic engineering. The trouble is that while there's been an extraordinary amount of genetic discovery and manipulation, there's been precious little engineering. Engineers are frustrated by genetics and molecular biology. The experiments are too slow, the complexity too messy, and growing more so all the time, and there's a frustrating lack of standardised components. They'd like to do to genetic engineering what engineers have done since the Stone Age. Collect, refine and repackage nature so that it's easier to make new and reliable things. Engineers want to treat DNA more like a programming language. Instead of ones and zeros, A's, T's, G's and C's. They want to use DNA to write simple, Lego-like functional components, inspired by, but not found in nature, and then run them in a cell instead of a computer. The only difference is this software builds its own hardware. They call this re-engineered genetic engineering synthetic biology. Nowadays, rather than cut and paste the DNA sequence out of one organism and into another, you can, if you know what you're doing, just type your DNA sequence into a computer, or copy it from a database, or even select from a growing component catalogue. And then you just order it over the internet. Yes, really. The DNA sequence may be copied from nature, but the DNA itself is made by a machine. It's synthetic. The raw material for synthesising DNA is sugar. $25 of which will buy you enough to make a copy of every human genome on the planet. The chemical letters are fed into the DNA equivalent of an industrial inkjet printer. In goes your sequence information, and out comes DNA, at a cost of less than 40 cents per base pair, and getting cheaper all the time. It's then freeze-dried and shipped to your door. Already engineers have assembled an open source catalogue of over 5,000 standardised components, called BioBricks. At an annual worldwide do-it-yourself competition, university students build new and more complex BioBricks, string them together, and then run them inside a much-studied intestinal bacteria, E. coli. Sure, they're toy projects with shoestring budgets, but the results are impressive. E. chromi, an E. coli with sensitivity tuner and colour generators, is programmed to turn one of five colours when it detects a certain concentration of an environmental toxin. E. coloroid is a bacterial system which switches on and off in response to red light and acts like a bacterial Polaroid camera. Groups with more time and a lot more money are rewriting, or call it in computer programming, refactoring whole systems. Jay Kiesling, chemical and biological engineer, and his team at UC Berkeley have built and continually refined a new metabolic pathway in yeast by assembling 10 genes from three organisms in an attempt to produce synthetically the anti-malarial drug artemisinin and to do it cheaply enough to treat up to 200 million malaria sufferers each year. Biotechnology pioneer Craig Venter has gone even further. His team has entirely replaced the DNA of one bacterium with a synthetic copy of DNA from another naturally occurring species and added a few extras, like their email address. This wasn't creating life, it was testing just how reprogrammable a bacterial cell can be, an important step if we want biological factories which can be tasked to make many things, like vaccine, medicine, food and even fuel. In the last 10,000 years, genetics has taken us from gathering seeds to manipulating DNA.
and engineering has taken us from rocks and caves to handheld computers and skyscrapers. We can only guess what the two working together as synthetic biology may help us achieve in the future. But the possibilities are breathtaking. Engineering algae that can eat climate-changing carbon dioxide and produce less polluting biofuels. We might do away with both liver and kidney transplants and instead use a vat-grown, all-purpose biological sieve organ called a cliver. We could change the nature of construction, architecture, urban planning, forestry and even gardening with a seed that can grow into a house. Or even return life to a whole planet by terraforming the long-dead Mars. Till then, synthetic biology advances project by project. As Drew Endy, civil engineer turned synthetic biologist, says, testing of understanding by building is the shortest path to demonstrating what you know and what you don't. In so doing, synthetic biology is already paying dividends by simultaneously expanding and testing our knowledge of cellular function. 